Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Akak, Wadash. Yahweh, being the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in Hada, Sham name, Yahweh Shai, being the Heavenly Begotten Son, meaning He deliver, He saves, Rechak, Wadash, Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the apostles and elders, great Milson, that were well. Peace and blessings unto the elect of Israel. Shalom and Ababa Ball. Back at it again with another lesson of the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'asham, El Shai. Lord willing, this video is edifying. All right. So, you know, I want to get into it through the spirit. Um, something I was meditating on a few days ago. You know, don't be surprised when you only see a few people stopping by the camp, waking up to this truth. And you see the masses just walk on by and not regard it, not care, not even think twice about it, not even consider. All right. Because this truth is only for the few and the humble, the elect. OK. And I got that. Uh. I got that title through the spirit from, you know, uh, the Marines, you know, what they say, the few, the proud, the Marines. Right. But really, it's the few. OK, because the elect is few, the humble, because the elect are going to be humble. The elect are going to humble themselves and submit to the ways of the Yahweh Shai. OK, because it takes pride to go against the ways of the Lord. All right. And it said and the elect, man, because that's really what it is. It's all about the elect. OK, the few, the humble, the elect, man. So I want to get into some precepts, basically backing up how this truth is only for the elect. All right. Ecclesiastes or Ezekiel chapter 11, son of verse 16. It says, um, therefore, say, thus saith the Lord power, although I have cast them far off among the heathen and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. That's right. The Lord is as little sanctuaries, man. Okay. You know, the various camps that you see throughout the uh, four corners of the earth, you know, there is a little sanctuary in comparison to uh, these mega churches, man. Going to show you that this truth is only for the elect. And as the scriptures say, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, roughly paraphrasing, man. So this goes to show you that just because we don't have the whole world on our side, just because the masses of people don't believe in what we believe in, doesn't mean that we're not um, on the right track, man. Okay? You know, if this truth was for everybody, you know, not saying that it wouldn't be special because it's still uh, it's still precious because it's still the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashman Shai. So that alone makes it special. But this truth isn't for everybody. That's what makes this. Uh, that's another reason why it is so special, because it's rare. It's only for the elect, man. OK, you know, just like gold, gold, gold is a precious metal, you know, not saying that there isn't a lot of gold out there, but gold in comparison to all these other elements, gold is a, is a precious metal. All right. You know, and like it says, the Lord is as little sanctuaries in the countries where they shall come. Man. All right. Even when you uh, get this priest right here, this is second Ezra chapter eight, standard verse one. And he answered me saying the most I had made this world for many, but the world to come for few, man. That's right. This world that we're in now is only for uh, uh, for for the masses. Right. But the world to come. Right. The the, the kingdom of heaven being on earth, that's going to be for the few. And that few represents the elect, man, because majority of these people in this world is getting ready to be put to death, be destroyed, man. OK, you know, like the scripture says, this slain of the Lord shall be from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth, man. They shall not be gathered nor buried. They shall be as dung upon the ground. All right? Scriptures all speak about how the, 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 the bodies of men shall be up to the camel's hoof and the horse's bridle. So you're going to have bodies stacked up out here, man. A lot of these people are getting ready to be destroyed. Isaiah 66 says how the slain of the Lord shall be many. Okay? So the Lord is getting ready to back, back to put in work. The Lord is getting ready to come back and destroy a lot of people because a lot of people are given over to vanity and wickedness, man. You see? So, it makes perfect sense why only the few, the elect, the humble, will receive this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Bashem Shai and fear the Lord and repent here in these last days, as it is written. All right, verse 2, I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold, whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. There be many created, but few shall be saved. All right. That's right, man. And does not the scriptures liken them the elect unto, uh, uh, to fine gold. All right. The, as the golden wedge of Ophir, you know, which is the most precious gold there is, man. 
So a man of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, like so say, the sons of Zion comparable to fine gold. Men of the Lord are gonna be like fine gold in these last days, man. You know, because in comparison to the masses of this world, it's gonna be rare to find a man of Yahweh Bashmel Shai. You know, who's of the elect, who the Lord is dealing with, man. And that's why you're gonna see situations like Isaiah 32, where it says a man shall be as a hiding place. All right, Isaiah 4 and 1, seven women taking hold on one man because there's gonna be a lack of men. All right, there's a lack of real men in the world now, you know, already before the destruction came. How much more when the Lord starts to lay these bodies down? There's gonna be a lot of ghost towns out here. And when you look at the ratio of humans, all right, there's, there tends to be more women in population than men, okay? So what is that gonna show you, man? That, there's, that a lot of women gonna have to share a man in that day, man, because there's gonna be a, a scarcity of men and real men of the Lord at that, man, okay? And that's why the men of the Lord are like enough to find gold, man. You know, a man shall be as a hiding place, man, okay? Because you're gonna see a lot of death out here, man, and only the elect is gonna make it through, the remnant, you know, and all the heathen that survive, they're gonna be left alive to go into slavery, into captivity, man. This is uh, 2 Ezra 9, starting at verse 15, I have said before and now do speak, and I will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. Like as a wave is greater than a drop, man. That's right, man. Okay? So there's going to be many more people who get destroyed, who die, than those who are going to receive salvation, man. Because the majority of this world is wicked, man. And the Heavenly Father, he don't play no games. He flooded the earth and only saved eight souls alive. What makes you think that the Lord is any different? The Lord said, I, the Lord, change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed, man. Okay, and the reason why the Lord is leaving the remnant so that he is because he doesn't change ultimately because even, you know, we, we as the remnant, Lord willing, we be a part of that elect. We went off too, but through the Lord's mercies and for his name's sake, he's going to have mercy on his elect. Lord willing, we be a part of that number, man. And he's not going to make a full end of the nation of Israel. You know, and how is he not going to make a full end through the remnant, through the elect? That's why the scriptures say, uh, if the Lord had not left the remnant, we would have been like under Sodom and Gomorrah, man. All right, so the Wadi Abashim Shai for leaving the remnant so that the nation of Israel doesn't get exterminated, man. So that the Lord can keep his promises that he kept to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is uh, Jeremiah 3 and 14. It says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, man. That's right. Going to show you what? That this truth isn't for everybody. You know, um, basically, what, what happened when Yahweh Shah was on the scene? Yahweh Shah, he had uh, b brothers and sisters, okay? He had, you know, family members who were in the truth, and he had family members who didn't follow him, huh? He had two brothers that followed him, and the rest of his family members didn't follow him. You know, his mother, you know, she, she, she might be of the elect, okay? But nonetheless, that goes to show you what? The Lord was true when he said he would take two of a family and one of a city and bring us to Zion. And you see that now, man. A lot of times for certain brothers, you know, it's a rare, it's a rare case when you find a brother's whole household in the truth. Okay? You know, sometimes a brother, it might be only that brother who believes. Okay? Sometimes you might see, you know, a brother, maybe his brother believes. Sometimes you might see a, two brothers and a father believe, you know. Sometimes you might even see the whole household, but that's rare. Okay? Most of the time you just see a brother. You know, or, or a brother and his woman or, you know, a man and his son, whatever the case might be. You see? So his truth isn't for the masses, man. It's only for the elect. OK. And you saw that with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, it, it, two, two, uh, two of a family, man. You know, and never mind those notes, you know, don't mind those notes because that was for a different scripture. You see what I'm saying? But anyways, um. Let's get an next precept. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, right? Go on and show you that this that it's scarce to find a man of the Lord in these times. Ecclesiastes 7. Even though there is a lot of the elect, the scriptures speak about how the elect is likened unto a innumerable multitude. But you got to think about the comparison of the elect in, in uh, compared to the rest of the world, man. You know, going to show you how much people is getting ready to die. Ecclesiastes 7, starting at verse 28, which I'm going to start at verse 27. Ecclesiastes 7 and 27. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. You see, so one man out of a thousand men were considered to be upright. You see? 
So that goes to show you the ratio of how many people are through in comparison to how many people the Lord is getting ready to have mercy upon, man. That's why it's a, that's why you can't fake the funk and act like you the, of the elect. Scripture speak about how the most I know of them that are his, man. All right? Let me get this real quick. And the Lord has given us the discernment to know who he's dealing with, who he's not. Malachi 3 and 18 tells you that. Psalms 4 and 3, but know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him, man. You see? So the Lord has set apart his elect for himself, man. Everybody else, they're giving over to their vanities. You know? That's why Yahweh Shai said in Matthew 22 and 14, for many are called, but few are chosen, man. That's right, man. Wide is the gate, and many there be which go therein at, which leads unto destruction. But the narrow and that straight gate, few there be that find it, man. So this truth is only for the few, the humble, the elect, man. Okay? And I'm sure there's other precepts you could get to back up the point. But the point has been made through the Spirit, man. Only the elect is going to be able to receive salvation in these times, man. Everybody else is through. Point blank period. So don't be surprised when you start to see a lot of people start dropping dead. A lot of people getting destroyed. All right? Yeah, it's bitter. Yeah, it's not easy to hear that. But it's coming, man. All right? So the best thing to do, it will behoove you to repent and serve the Lord and put off your own foolish ways and take heed to the ways of Yahweh Shemashai. If not, get destroyed, man, in your folly, man. All right? Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded, man. So that's what it's all about. It's all about the elect, man. The truth is only for the elect. Everybody else is going to be destroyed, man. Okay? He's only coming for his elect. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark which means Dawa, mark of exemption, of judgment, upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So the majority of these people are not sighing and crying to the Lord, man. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary Then they began at the ancient men Which were before the house And he said unto them Defile the house And fill the courts with the slain Go ye forth And they went forth And slew in the city And it came to pass While they were slaying them And I was left That I fell upon my face And cried and said Ah oh, Lord power Will thou destroy all the residue of Israel In thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem Going to show you that A lot of people getting ready to be put to death man Okay then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. And the land is full of blood and the city full of perverseness. For they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Right. You want to live wickedly? You want to go do your fucking folly? Go celebrate your pagan ass holidays. Go fucking eat your defiled ass food. Go be an adulterer, a thief, a liar, a robber, so on and so forth, man. Okay, being a wicked scammer, being a harlot, you know, and you have no plans to repent, no plans to, you know, humble yourself, man, before the Lord and pray before Yahweh Shem and pray for forgiveness, you're going to die, man. All right? And the Lord is not going to have pity upon you in that day. You're going to call upon the Lord in that day, and he's not going to answer you, man. The Lord's going to turn his face from you, man, because you behaved yourself ill in your doings, man. And while you yet had opportunity to repent, you, you, you said it as a thing of not, man. Okay. It says, and behold, the man clothed with the linen which had the inkhorn by his side reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. That's right. Them deaf angels, they ain't gonna come, they're not gonna return in vain, man. The Lord sent them out to do a mission to put somebody to death. Guess what? Somebody getting put to death, man. No if fans or buts about it, man. And a lot of you people, you deserve this shit. Because you know better, but you don't want to do better, man. James 4 and 17. You know, let me get this precept. Second Ezra seven, and uh, verse nineteen. And he said unto me, "There is no judge above the Most High, and none that hath understanding above the Highest. For there be many that perish in this life." It didn't say many saved. It said many that perish. 
in this life because they have despised the law of Yahweh Bashmashai that is set before them. For Yahweh Bashmashai hath given straight commandment to such as came what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. But his law have they despised and denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. So what's going to happen? They're going to be destroyed, man. Rightfully so. What do you expect? You living wickedly before the Lord. You think the Lord just going to give you a pat on the back, man? And tell you everything's okay? No, he's going to reprove you with judgment, man. And if you keep continually walking contrary to him, he's going to walk contrary to you and bring seven times more plagues upon you for your evil and for your wickedness, man. To the point where he got to destroy you if you don't turn back, man. All right? Yeah, how about Shemesh is getting ready to bring a lot of death in the planet Earth, man. A lot of these people think it's a fucking joke. Well, you're going to find out the hard way. Lord willing, this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem El Shai, Bashem Chakudaj, Double Honesty, Apostle, I was great, most never well. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all.